Hey, my name is Stefan Abramsson. Uh, we were the contractors for, for this job. So, uh, uh, and I represent uh, Linden Scandinavia as well as VHAG, which is represented by John over there, who is the wooden uh, manufacturer. Uh, to explain, as uh, Martin has done, uh, we had the contract from BRA, the client, for, uh, in principle, all the stuff that you see on the pictures, the facades, the glue lamp, and all the acoustic panels that form the barge of the tree trunks. Um, we had a good team. We had the architects, and we had uh, the client, and the Volvo guy, and all the team from VHAG, and it, it worked really well together the whole time. Uh, the time issue here was quite critical. We were supposed to start on the 4th of April uh, in 22 and be finished and have a sealed building by uh, mid-October 22. So we had a very short uh, time span. And it's a lot of timber. It's 6,000 cubic meters of uh, finished product uh, to be installed by uh, coming in 160 lorries and, and to be installed in this short time. Uh, the build-up is all, uh, quite complicated of all these landscapes and things. It's done in uh, blue lamb and CLT. And uh, the glass facades are wrapping around the complete building, uh, fitting the uh, heights of the different landscapes around it, and uh, fitting the grid of the, the column. So the glass is like 6 by 2.4 meter size. So it's quite, quite large. Uh, just the current picture from the hidden gem on the top. It's uh, now uh, finished with all the sedum roof uh, applied on, on the outside and, and uh, it looks really, really nice. Uh, acoustic panels, totally in timber, uh, as well as the carrying structures. It, uh, it gives the sound absor absorption to the rooms, as well as forming a nice surface uh, for the trees. It's uh, introduced everywhere, and it's also uh, soffits and, and all kinds of things in timber. So now we're going to uh, have a, a, a summary movie, which we have taken snapshots uh, during the, the, the time that we actually installed it. Here's the first truck from uh, coming from Austria. It's uh, the beam. Ah, uh, good. So it's a 35 meter um, beam and then we had to close the streets uh, to stop the trains to, to get it in. And it's lifted, it's so heavy we had to use two cranes to lift it in uh, because one crane couldn't do it. So this is the first beam that we installed and from that we build it out in like a cathedral shape. Uh, three cathedral, cathedrals which are in the middle. And uh, it's all supposed to be hidden connections. So uh, in, uh, inside here, there's a lot of steel. I think it's around 160 tons of steel. Uh, but it's all hidden in the end by these cover plates. The cover plates has two functions. They protect, uh, they hide the steel and they protect the steel from fire. So here's a few weeks later, we started to install and the, install the CLT. It's around 18,000 square meters of CLT in the project. So it's a quite big uh, function. And in such a project, uh, one of the main concerns is water and rain. So the main idea was to get the roofer guy to come really shortly after we have installed the CLT. And then uh, put the tar paper on so the water goes away. And as we said, time is critical, so as soon as VHAG has installed uh, the wood and are finished on the roof, we will uh, start installing the brackets for the facades and then follow with the facades around the building. So we basically uh, end up at the same place at the same time. Uh, yeah, the, the building is 110 meters across. So if you stand in one end, I think it's 90 something meters inside. So there is, you can see straight through and there's no columns. It's just open, the whole thing. It's, uh, it was supposed to be self-supporting. So you, we're not allowed to have any crosses in the structure. So it would uh, be uh, stiff enough to do it. 
Here we are starting to install the, the pavilions. And uh, you get a feeling for how it's gonna uh, look in the end. Uh, there is a, a stairway which wraps around the hub C all the way to the top. And all the decks are in CLT and everything is actually in, in wood. Except the cores for the stairways and, and the elevators. This is a quick drive up the, the, up the stairs. But as you see, it's a lot of pieces and the uh, tolerance from VIHAG is within millimeters on all, all the beams. And we have not uh, had any re uh, rejections. Everything fitted together really well. And uh, very uh, minimal cutting on, on site. If you see a guy with a big chainsaw on the site, tell him to go away and go home. <laughs> and, and, and figure out what's wrong instead. <laughs> Yeah, the facade is coming on the pav pavilion and it's uh, working in many layers uh, at the same time to, to be able to finish the project. Uh, the, the tar paper is, all, is, uh, is working as the diffusion layer from the inside. So all the wood is on the dry inside, so there, if there is leakage or something, it can always dry out inwards. It was drawn uh, some box system from the start, but we uh, changed it to a, a solid CLT system with uh, uh, all the insulation and everything on the top. So now we're coming to... Uh, the end here soon. Now we do the exit from the movie. But you see this, uh, the wood is quite popular in Gothenburg. They're making a swimming arena just beside it, all in wood and the EF, ETFE. And uh, 35 weeks to build the whole uh, structure. How did we uh, come about this? We, uh, Martin, he, who works with Rhino and Grasshopper, we do the same. Uh, but we, to be able to generate uh, drawings, production drawings, we take this in information into Tecla, which is a steel program uh, from the start. But it can uh, draw many things from this. So now we're going to show you a small movie on how it's actually done. Uh, I hope. No. Nee. Vi får sätta på filmen där. Där var uh, When we get the model from uh, 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 Martin and his crew, we take it into Rhino uh, and Grasshopper again. And they generate the, the glass, uh, out the surface of the glass. Usually when we get some uh, information done in Revit or something, there are no modular lines left. It's only a gap. We cannot work with the gap. We have to have the, the, the total uh, geometry in, in, uh, in surfaces to be able to define outside of the glass and then build inwards or inside of the glass or whatever we do. So here we generate all the shapes of the glass in uh, Rhino and Grasshopper. Uh, and then we decide uh, the composition of the glass. If we have different, like we have fire glass in one place, we have uh, regular glass or other things. And we then decide which type of glass it is. And then we have uh, uh, the thickness of the pack in pockets. Uh, we have little pockets because it's a silicone seal system. So we have to introduce pockets into the glass. And then we can see how it looks in uh, uh, a small... Um, Test glass on, 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 the, on the model. So here is uh, checking the different. Uh, I will see. So it's making the sample. So we can. Uh, this is the offset. How much we take uh, decrease the glass from the modular lines to be able to fit it. 
He introduces the pocket system, uh, distance between them, and then he uh, uh, decides on uh, where they should be, top right, bottom. And then he uh, applies the whole thing to the Tecla model. So we know which type of gloss is where. We can check that so it's proper. And then he generates uh, from uh, Rhino, he generates the, the, all the uh, models into Tecla. Uh, which we then can make port drawings from and uh, make production drawings. So this is our way to digitize, digitalize uh, and uh, benefit from Martin's work uh, before and take that on and not just start from zero again. And, uh, and the same applies to, to uh, VIAG. They take these models and, and they start the calculation uh, from that. So in the model, all the details are the, the pre-fitted uh, top and bottoms. The brackets you saw on the movie uh, is all there. We can uh, install the gloss in, in theory before we come to the site, see everything fits. Uh, especially in these strange shapes, it's good to have a, a, a visual check instead of trying to check drawings. It's very difficult. We can here see where the pockets are situated and uh, supports and rubber gaskets, uh, whatever, what, whatever you like. So this is uh, our team of uh, 15 engineers. They are working on these things to make it fit. And then we make production drawings, get it produced by somebody, and then we install it on site in our own teams. I think that's done. Uh, we use it also for the interiors. Uh, this is the acoustic panels, and they are generated by this uh, mass of lines. Totally crazy things. But still, it comes out like this. And this is a mock-up we've done to show uh, the, the architect we have in, uh, in the office. So when we have an opening, we have to make curved uh, timber. And then we have to make uh, straight. Uh, this is, yes, something else. And then inside the hub C, we do uh, wall claddings, like a kidney shape. And we have to make guardrails in timber for all the different shapes of the decks. And it's all done by these uh, rhino and grasshopper things. You understand that it's not me who does it, it's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and we also do the soffits in the same way. So we have the, the thing and then we can in incorporate it, everything into one model and then we have a, a, f a finished product. For example, here we have to make a 3D curved soffit under the stairs. We then design it in, 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 the, in the software. We then send these cutouts to VHAG and they come uh, pre-made from Austria. And then we can just install the, the old wooden floor. There was one thing more that we would were asked to talk about and it was uh, timber facades. Since we're a facade company, we have also made a, a, a old timber system. So this is probably the first office building in the world where the facade is totally in timber. It consists of a big glass box to the front and uh, a normal uh, office facades on the back and uh, two and a half story uh, high facade down here. So these parts are stick built. These are glass roofs. And when we check the, the CO2 uh, improvement, by doing an all timber roof compared to steel and glass uh, roof, we improved the uh, CO2 level with 135%. So it's actually a negative value for the frame of this roof. Architectural uh, images. We all, uh, to, for, to improve these new systems, we do tests, mock ups, show the client. 
We have test results. We have very good uh, pressure values up to 1500 pascals. Usually a window can take 600 maybe. And we base the whole system on standard uh, glue lamp sections. It's the, here, this one. Uh, basic 225 by 56 and on the bottom of the window 90 high. Now we can build uh, and what you see from the inside is then all wood. This is the finished product where we have installed uh, the main frame. We are in a hybrid situation where we have primary uh, timber where, and hang the decks from, uh, from, the, uh, from the top of the columns and install the concrete decks onto the wood. And then we install the uh, secondary structure for the facade on the, tim uh, on the decks. That was it. Thank you.